All right, sweetheart. So today I get to have the pleasure of having one of my clients on with me. And no, we are not going to go all into his branded business, but we are going to talk about business because we're both old school. And people think because we got gray on the top that we ain't got shit to add to this day and age. But trust and believe, there is a whole lot of knowledge up in here. And he's been in business for over 40 years. I've been in it for over 20. That's 60 years worth of shit. Come on now. Y'all got to get ready for this. So stay tuned. Hey, brand babies, this is Brand Moms Podcast, where we go in on personal branding without taking shit personally. Brand Moms House is hosted by none other than the ghetto country grandmother. She's here to share her experience, expertise, and education in a way that takes you from brand baby to brand leader. So come on in and hold on to your bourbon, because Brand Moms about to spill the tea. All right, brand babies. I got my sweetheart, Steve here. Steve is, he is my brattiest brand baby. And let me tell y'all how bratty he is. My husband went and bought me cigars. So me, <laughs> me and Steve is smoking the house. <laughs> Neil does not let me smoke in the house, but I told him that Steve was coming on. He asked, was he smoking? I said, yes. Neil went out and bought me two cigars. I got him right here. But I, 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 I got my cigar, man. I can't, I'm in my little office. So I can't get rid of the stink. I know, I know. So we're not going to do it right now, but I'm, I'm going to let you guys talk to Steve and we're going to get into this. It is not going to stay on top of with branding, but it is going to have little smidges here and there. But this is mostly about the knowledge that old school can bring to the room. How about that? So, Steve, come on, tell us something that that I already know. So I'm not going to tell him. So you tell me how you want to introduce yourself, sweetie. Phyllis, I'm just bringing it real. Like I even put a sport coat on just for you. My yes, dear, you did. Because usually I'm, I'm I'm working, I'm hustling, just whatever it takes. I mean, basically, I've been at this for 40 years. Um, I didn't, at first, when we started working together, I didn't feel like I had a lot to offer, you know, just because we've been doing it. But now I come to believe that, you know, 40 years, I have a lot of um, trials and tribulations, right? So I've done it wrong. So many, I mean, I am a professional at doing it wrong. I'm also a professional at doing it right. So... I'm I'm here to tell you to save everybody the heartache, right? So there is a shortcut to save the heartache and the pain and the suffering that we've all endured as being an entrepreneur in your own space. It is a thing. And people think because you've been in business a long time, that that means you've been successful the whole time. And while there are ele levels to success, one of the things I can look back on now that I do branding is I see how many millions we left on the table. And how you go back and pick that up, it's like you can't wallow in the fact that it, you missed it, but you got to keep moving on. And like I say, Steve has been doing this for 40 years. And the fact that he still still sees value in building up his brand after all this time, because he wants to come at it in a stronger fashion and finding out that, y'all, I know so much about landscape design that it'll blow your mind. Trust and believe. Steve, before, before you started looking at how you were going to brand and how you were going to change, did you even recognize how much value you was bringing to the game outside of your clients that you already have? I mean, you know, just by doing this for so long, you, you do build up some sort of, you know, altitude in dealing with your clients and you have a certain um, level of respect. You know, I do call this snow on the roof, gray hair, you know, so I have a lot, you know, I mean, going up against a 20 year old, there's no competition, right? Because I just have so many, you know, when you were growing up and, you, and your father said, oh, just wait till you know, you get older, you you know, they, they didn't know anything. Yeah. They didn't know anything. Parents never knew anything. But as I'm now at that stage, the kids don't know anything. You yes. know? So it's kind of crazy how it just flipped around. So then what do you see now as far as like your progression? Cause I, like I say, you've been in this for 40 years. And you've gone through employees, you've gone through staff, you've gone through crews. Cause the thing about Steve, y'all don't know, dude does design, but he speaks construction. It's crazy. You ask him about a design and I promise you, he'll tell you about the stones on the ground, how to put the pool in, where the flowers go and all that stuff. But it all started with his level of designing and he still does it by hand. Like I say, I could shoot the shit about Steve for real. I am his walking commercial. <laughs> <laughs> but in going through all of the staff that you've probably been through over the years, what is the the one biggest challenge that a lot of people don't see when they're hiring? Um, people talk a good game. 
Like I've hired people that came in here, fancy resumes, talked a good game. Like, I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm just gullible and naive, but they talk a good game until when it comes time to put on the pads and get on the field. You know, or shit hits the fan, I guess to say, right? When mm -hmm. you have a problem on the job, how does that person react to the situation? Because when everything's going smooth, it's easy. It's when shit hits the fan, deadlines are done, budgets are overrun, uh, the weather's bad. Like, how are you going to adapt and call an audible and put the ship back on track, right? Does that make sense? Is that No, that makes it? total sense to me. Yeah. Because, like, I, I don't have any employees now. I don't know if I'll ever have them again. I might because there's a certain level of scaling I want to do for my own business. But when we when we think about it and we talk about it, like you said, there are 20 year olds out here trying to do what you do. And the thing about, when I talk about being old school, there's a certain level of grind that we put to this. We put in a lot of effort. Whereas most people like, well, I don't wanna work that hard. And I know Steve, you, like I said, you start your drawings off by hands, but then you pass them off to let somebody else do them in 3D renderings. Why is it that you've never learned to do 3D renderings? Honestly, when I'm drawing it on the computer, looking at it, I don't have the same feel as for the space for some reason. I don't mm -hmm. know. It's like when you're drawing it on paper, you feel like you're flying over in, in an airplane looking down over on the site. I just get a better sense of the space and how, how the space is inter interconnected and how the traffic flows go with the backyard. And that just works for me. And I can do them fast. I can do them fast. What is fast in your industry? I can do them I can crank out a concept sketch, you know, a couple hours, like just, you know, get the feel of the space after talking to the client. It helps talking to the client first so you can get inside their head. And then you want to take that what's in their head. I need to take the stuff that's in your head and put it on paper. That's how the whole process starts. Yeah. And because one of the misconceptions I had is I, I didn't make the total connection between graphic design and landscape design. But I kind of put the two in the same room and they are so not because Steve has to know engineering. He has to know plant science and he has to know all these other things that goes along with doing design. Whereas other people, when they're doing designs, it's like, oh, let me ask some questions. Like you said, you talk to the clients, but that's the extent of their, their knowledge. I understand what they told me and I can understand what I produce. But then how do you end up putting all three together? And like I say, this is a 40 year game for you. So how do you end up putting it all together? Engineering, science, all that shit. <laughs> I mean, you, you know, when you're doing a, a design for a client, you, you walk around the backyard, you, they kind of tell you what they want the space to feel like and all that. And then we do the renderings. Then when they see the rendering, they're just like, okay, that looks good. They don't care or they don't want to know about the engineering, the soil, the drainage, the type of plants and all that. They just want to know what's this going to take to get me this picture in my backyard, right? And you need to know, like, I, so I always say, by, by me working in the field, working in the field means actually doing the construction. That's why you always get on my case when I talk about construction, but you need to know construction to design it. You, you know, you just can't put a pretty picture on a, on a computer. You have to, you have to build it. It has to be executable. I, I agree because like I said, some people, even when I talk about branding, branding has to be actionable. You have to put some, some, some grease, elbow grease behind it. But in, in the last 40 years, what has been the biggest challenge for you in making sure that you're still around? How long do you want to stay in this game? First of all, let me back up. How long do you think you want to continue it in this, in this game? Phyllis. Yes, I sweetheart. Can't, I can't stand golf. I'm not playing <laughs> golf. I, I'm I, I'm good for like a few holes and then I get bored and I move on, right? I need to feel the machines, the sound, the construction, the, the chaos. It's just me, man. I, I gotta, I, you know, the, the loud noise, the yelling, the Dunkin' Donuts, that's just part of the whole. I think when you go from something like, you know, so the backyard is like my, my canvas, let's say, right? Mm -hmm. So when I take a piece of canvas, somebody's flat backyard and we create something like a swimming pool with the waterfall, outdoor kitchen, fire pit, you create something. So you basically, you're creating something out of nothing. Yeah. I have to it's like an artist. It's like an artist. Is he ever going to retire? Is it, I mean, did they ever just retire, hang up their paintbrush? I don't, I don't think so. And I don't, I don't think I, I'm with you. I don't think I want to retire. I would retire from a corporate job if I had one again, but I think it limits our, our perspective on what retirement looks like. A lot of people, like I said, if they stay stuck in a job for too long, then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I get to get out of here in 20 years. But when you're doing something that you love and that you're good at, like why I got to quit? 
God well, willing, I gotta right? Stay healthy, God willing, right? Just keep it rolling. You be out walking at four in the morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With the dog. Well, I see you go stay healthy it for a while. The summer it gets a little lighter in the summer, but yeah, I mean, it, I, I go to bed it early too, though. I'm not, I, I need my sleep. Oh my God. Yeah. When I, when I tell you he's bratty, this is the dude that sends me emails at four in the morning. But because I, I, I value my clients, when I get up, I answer his emails. I'm the, I'm the first one you see when you click on that email. That's it. I want to be the first, not second. I want to be the first person you see when you have your coffee and you turn your computer After off. I see Neil, huh? That's it. Oh, <laughs> tell me this. How do you stay creative after 40 years? I mean, it's like, I've new. seen your drawing, so. I mean, it's not really the, the drawing is just a part of the job. I don't just sit there and draw and hand off the drawing to some guy and tell him to build it. I have to be hands-on throughout the entire process because there is several tweaks that come up on the job. There's different things that you may run to be. So you always have to kind of hold the client's hand and make sure that job, you want to ensure the integrity of the design, right? So what's my, in my head and on paper has to be translated into 3D, which is the life, uh, living, breathing backyard right so that's how you have to kind of just look at it that way right you just can't hand off the drawing to somebody and say here here you go pay me my um design fee and then i'll never see it but my thing is like after 40 years how do you still stay creative because i i, I we talk about some of the people that do what you do and some of their shit just look so the same it's like it's just a remake of moving the blocks around because there's so many angles but Yours, I mean, there's so much life. And I think it's because I appreciate the beauty of what's outside. But you bring so much life and so much distinction to your designs. How do you maintain that? Do you read a fucking magazine? Do you look at stuff? How do you no, do that? No, it's just, you just get it. That's why I always um, insist on, um, I have to walk the site. I have to go to the job site. I have to see if there's a, a, a focal point I can view on a nice tree, a certain rock outcrop I can focus on. So you got to walk the site. You get boots on the ground as you and I come up with that term. Boots on the ground, walk the site, get a sense of it. And the creativity comes from just trying to create something unique for that client. Every job is different. Thousands I put in, they're all different in so some it, form or another, right? They're, they yeah. just may have a little different element in it, but they all have that signature look about them. And they, I, I build it just for that client. So is it more about the client or is it more about what actually fits the aesthetic of the space? Or is it a combination of the two? Oh, it's a combination of two. I've had clients say, oh, I really want this. And I just tell them flat out, it's not going to look good. It doesn't go with the design of the house or whatever that means. It all has, You really want it to be, when you're designing a backyard or a front yard or anything, you want it to look like it was always there and they just simply place the house in the middle of it all, right? Just like gently, like a little baby, put it. You don't want to make this look like it's contrived concoction, right? It has to kind of all tie in. I think that's what sets me apart a lot is that I'm able to do that. And like I said, you've been doing it all this time. And it's the longevity that's so surprising because I hear so many people, I just told you before we jumped on this call, people jump in and out of working with me so quickly because they want quick answers. But you got to be as good as you are because you stayed in this granted you were you were kind of brought into construction by your dad right he worked in the union in the city i would work there um you know my winter vacations just to get some beer money for college but i mean i never really i mean i was the guy that carried the shit across the job site and get coffee i didn't really work in the business i've seen it i was around it and i didn't want to be that person right i don't want to i never wanted to be the worker for somebody i always wanted to be the guy right it's just the guy okay so explain to me how do you go to school for landscape design but you speak construction so fluently is that because you were the guy slipping shit across the yard no because you have to you, know, you, can only, you have to be able to build what you design right so you, every time you get on my case about don't talk construction i think <laughs> it's like i gotta talk construction because i gotta build it the design is just one element of it, right? It has to work. It has to be, you know, it just doesn't, doesn't be a pretty picture. It has to be sustainable. It has to last. Like, you have to know how to build it in order to design it. Does that make sense? That makes total sense now. After all yeah. this time, that makes total sense now. 
<laughs> now it makes sense. So, so after you yell at me every time about don't talk construction, it's all hand in hand. But now I, and this is what I say in working with, with you in this time, I learn a little bit each time we have a more intense conversation. And it's knowing that, like I say, I see the value in everything that you do, but talking about the value. And like you said, you think people don't want to hear it. I want to hear it. I want you to hear me that I, I do design, but I speak construction because after I design it, you got to build this shit. Exactly. That makes total sense to me. Whereas, like I say, because I've only experienced design through like graphic designers or artists or something like that, there's no big ass tangible asset as far as a house sitting in the middle of it. So it's, it's kind of like, I guess that's all right. So that's another thing we just picked up here that also sets me apart. Not only have I sat behind a computer and just drew it like some guys never been in the field, digging the holes, putting in the drain. I've done all that. Right. So I know what it takes to execute the job. Right. So I think that's a, that's a rare combination where you, the guy that builds it also can design it. That is a rare quality. Cause like I say, I know the people that we looked at to do that, do what you do. I don't, I don't know them personally, but just in looking at their, the, how they work. It's like one of the people, and I'm not going to mention any names, they design shit with, without meeting the client. They do these sales calls and all that kind of stuff. And then they hand you your design and then give you a list of construction people to go do or to go vet. Phyllis, you if you, brought me, if you to brought me somebody and, and he told me he had construction experience and that he can design, all I have to do is hand him a shovel and tell me to dig a hole for a plant. And I will tell you in two seconds if he's ever done it before because there's a way to use the shovel. Have you ever seen somebody use a shovel that's never used the shovel? It's it's almost Hell, embarrassing. I've never used the shovel. So. I mean, it, it, it's it's not it's not pretty. It, it's not pretty. No way. So there you go. Free okay. tip for all the listeners. If you ever want to see if anyone they, hand them a shovel, just give them a shovel. Dig me a hole one foot by one foot, and I'll you'll know right away. I can the promise right you. See that that comes with snow on the roof. That's that only that. I don't really dig anymore, but I but could still, dig. But still, it's it's like, and because of that, we know the quality of the crew that you're going to bring in. Oh yeah, that that right there just leads to more to more value as far as I'm concerned. It's like I know if I see somebody pick up a shovel and I know they're doing it wrong, I know they don't need to work on the site because. He does not work on low-end properties, you guys. He's working on second homes and summer homes. Y'all know folks that got that kind of money. They not. <laughs> this is not somebody who just bought their first home type of shit that he does, because you have a you have a lot of um, referrals as well. Yes, they, they call him all the time. So, how do yeah, you they call me all the time? <laughs> how do you navigate all of that level of crazy? I don't know. It's just come. It's, people are crazy, man. Like. We could sit here and we could talk for hours on the stories of the nonsense I got to deal. It's just part of it. Give me I, one story. Give me one story. Oh. Your favorite one. What's the one that you tried out at parties? And I don't even think you party, but still. I mean, what's the which one? one? The one, the crazy ladies that call and talking about they want like flowers everywhere, but I'm allergic to bees and it doesn't work that way. And it's just like, it just, and they're talking about what color plants they want. And I got an eight foot hole in their backyard and I, I, I said, we're not even at that stage yet. You have to really like pump the brakes up. And everybody's just scrolling on the Pinterest. I sit there in front of me and they just, oh, look, and they just, until we have a come, until, oh yeah, until we have a come to Jesus moment where that means that garden you're showing me is, has somebody clipping those flowers every day and somebody, a, a full-time gardener making it look like a Martha Stewart garden, right? But like, most people don't have the time or the, the the resources to have all that, right? So you want to design something that's 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 durable and that kind of sustains itself that needs a little clip, but not high, high maintenance stuff. So okay. that's part of the stuff that I can teach that that you know that is as opposed to just somebody who does design on a computer and doesn't know the types of plants to use and all that stuff, right? So what is the what is the because I know there are people out here who try to DIY, so they YouTube and all of that kind of stuff. What is the one thing they normally mess up on when they DIY? Oh, man, I could spot a DIY a mile away. They go to How Home so? Depot. They go to Home Depot. Mm -hmm. They pick out the plants, and they look like a candy store, right? Because there's 
just the color of everything. And they start picking one of each, right? Mm. And they bring it to the house and it looks like a freaking cartoon and you just have it all over the place. There's no design, there's no balance, there's no flow, it just is everywhere. So you basically just wasted your money because you'll plant something that's next to the door that you don't know how big it's gonna get. You bought it when it's this big and three years it's gonna be 20 feet tall, right? So you got to redo it anyway. So that's why you need to know the plant material, what plants go where. My goodness, and I'm sitting here, I'm cracking up because- <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. It's true. Um, no, I get it, I get it. But then- <laughs> And they're so proud of it. And they're so proud of it. They're so proud. It's like, oh, mommy, look what I made. I mean, it, it's okay. It's just not, doesn't really enhance the, you know, poorly designed landscape on the front of your home doesn't raise the value of the home, right? A properly mm -hmm. landscaped design can raise your property value 20% easy. Really? Yeah. So instead of putting in a new bathroom, doing the landscape is a better option? Well, yeah, think about it. Like, I mean, you know, bathrooms and kitchens are always good, but the landscaping is always the first thing. Like, say you're getting your house, you're going to sell your house, let's say. That's the first thing people see. It's like the cover of a book. Before you even open the book, they're going to look at the cover. So somebody's going to drive by the listing, take a look at the house, and it just, you can tell if everything is kind of put together, right? Yeah, because I where I live now, it's like nobody does landscape. They don't even do yard work. <laughs> you know, nothing like a green lush lawn. Oh my God. So tell me how often do, how often do, because I don't think I ever asked you this, how often do people confuse what you do with you being a landscaper versus a uh, landscape oh, designer? Um, so what do you do? Oh, I'm a landscape architect. Oh, I, you know, I, can you come cut my grass? Like, like yeah. It's a, <laughs> Have an answer. <laughs> I mean, like, oh, yeah, cut my grass, pull my weeds. They don't, they don't really understand a landscape architect is basically an architect that deals with anything outside your four walls, right? That's the easy way to, because you wouldn't build a house without an architect. Like people understand the house. Oh, I need an architect to build a house. But they don't really understand that they need a landscape architect slash landscape designer to design the spaces that out the outside. Because it's basically you're designing outdoor rooms as opposed mm -hmm. to indoor rooms. It's the same thing. It just doesn't have walls and a roof. It does have walls and a roof, right? Because it has floor, which could be grass or patio. It okay. has walls, which could be fence or hedges. It has a ceiling, which could be a, a pergola, a canopy, or an overhanging tree. Lighting is the same thing, right? Outdoor, so it's the same elements, right? Just, Shut the front door. Yeah, man, I just I just dropped you. You oh, just man. dropped it on me. I did not. <laughs> that is how the easiest one for the people that moved out of the city during COVID, they bought a house and they're clueless. That I have to break it down that like that, then they understand it. Shut up. Yeah. So then then when people like if it goes back to the DIY, they're messing with their house on the outside, is is like they're devaluing it almost when they do that. Correct. Wow. Well, psh, consider my mind blown. Cause I would not have put it in that terms. And this is the thing about when you talk about what you do, being able to break it down to, to that specific, y'all, that's because we older. We can talk about the just shit that we like. But just at least get a plan. At least spend a few bucks and get a plan. You can still DIY, it, but at least you have a roadmap and a, and a graphical representation of what's going to go where. It makes it so much easier. But even that is, I, I don't even, I wouldn't even just buy a plan because the measurements could be off. It's, well, it's a, that whole a, thing. Well, if you have a plan, it's, You'll see it's like a, a map, right? Put no, but I'm saying they can only do the plans if they took the measurement themselves, right? Yeah, well, yeah, whatever. Somebody has to measure. Yeah, you have to have you have to know what size space you're working with to see if you can fit everything in that space. Okay. Cause the the like I said, the the more that I talk to you, the more I learn. And the crazy part is now when I go riding around and I'm looking at people say, I, I, I promise you, you know what I say? I wonder what Steve would do with that. I wonder you, send, you send me a picture. Oh, you drive <laughs> by, you send me this, you, I, you know, can you believe I meant to take a picture that? of the backyard and put it up here and ask you what to do, but it's, put it up. We'll do I it didn't right now. take it. I didn't take it. Get Neil outside. Get him out there. <laughs> Neil's in his man cave studio outdoor. He's not even paying me no attention. He told me I could smoke in the house, so he left. But anyway, 
So um, what do you think, what do you think the future of design is going to look like, especially with everybody falling on their AI sword? What do you think that's going to do to your industry? AI sword, I, I don't know. Let Does me tell you something. Matter? Who is going to, I don't think I'll be here when the robots start putting the masonry walls together and the whole, you still need asses and elbows to get it done. So, you know, have fun doing that. Try dealing with those guys, the workers in the field and trying to coordinate that and keeping the peace between all the workers. You know, actually when the robots do it, it'll be, it'll be less headache, but it's going to be a little while. So you don't think that that AI is going to impact like even unless, just unless AI, like unless, maybe it's true. Let's say I can tell me what's under that ground. Is there water under there? Is there clay under there? Like, you know, what's under the ground? Because that's the most important part when you're planting. Are you going to plant the plant in clay because it's just going to die because it's going to sit in water? There's still a lot of things in there that, you know, AI can probably give you a pretty picture of the backyard at this point. As it develops, I don't know. But right now, I'm still hand-drawing it, getting the 3D renderings, and getting the boys to do the work. How long does it take you to, to like, once you go and do a consultation? So yeah. you're out doing a consultation and I know you walk around the property. How long does it take before it starts kicking in how you plan to design based on what they said? I don't know. I, I don't know. Could come to me in the shower. Could come to me on my bike ride. It could come to me walking the dogs. And they ask me when, how long? And I tell them, I'll let you know when they, when they. Really? Yeah. Like, like you just got to kind of sketch it out and just kind of think about it and come back to it. And I don't know. Sometimes it comes easy and sometimes I got to, you got to work bit. at it. Yeah, so you got to kind of kind of work on it. You have to when you're doing that, when you're doing the like, how many iterations do you normally go through when you're going through that process? I nail it first time, man. Shut up. First time, I catch the vision, and okay, we may have to tweak it a little bit, but pretty much, if I have that right conversation with them and I ask uh -huh. the right questions, I kind of get it. Like, I, I kind of get it. We may change the shape a little bit and make this a little bit, but I kind of pretty much capture the feeling of it. And, you know, what also helps too, if they can kind of give me some inspiration pictures that they kind of like, just, I really, really ask them, what's the feeling you want to be when you go outside? It mm -hmm. could be, I want to feel peaceful. Okay. Then I know what that looks like. I want to feel like I'm in Las Vegas. Then I know what that looks like. I want to feel like I'm at the Ritz Carlton. I know what that looked like. Right. I want to mm -hmm. build a micro resort. Then I know what that looks like. Right. Um, so it's all kind of depends on the feeling they want to get with on the outside when they walk outside. I want to be on vacation. I don't care where it is. Just get out, get me out of here. <laughs> so when you, when you design, how much of it is something, do you ever put something of Grigsy in there? Like yes. is their design, their space and all that kind of stuff. But is there ever a Grigsy special touch that you put on stuff? Absolutely. Everyone has a little bit of something in there. What it is could, it? It could be a, I don't know. It could be a diving rock on a pool, right? Uh -huh. And it, it has to be the right rock, right? So I have to go to these quarries and find the right rock. It's just not, it doesn't say on the drawing, one rock it has to be the right rock, right? Or or stone bench. I have to find the right stone for the bench. Or I may be digging the property. We may dig a big stone, a big slab of a stone. I'll make a bench out of that, right? Just something, wow. something I have to, I don't know, something and unique about that job. Do Whatever you know? Did you notice how your tone kind of changed when you start talking about it? I'm t uh, you, seriously, you just went like so soft and so like you just I felt it. What's that? <laughs> I don't know because, and this is why I say when people try and do shit in a rushed manner, when you don't hire someone that's been around for years, there's there was a tone in your voice when you were talking about the 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 diving rock and the bed and you just kind of got this mellow vibe to it no because we just did a job and he's like we built a big kitchen step down bar and patios and fire pit and he freaking talks about the rock i got for the diving board that's fucking amazing yeah pretty, i'll send you a picture of it. it was like all right well i mean to me it's just like yeah, that's just a rock but it's not just the rock it's not that's just the rock it has to be the right rock and the fact that, but see, you say- I've sent rocks back. I've sent rocks back. They bring me a rock. And I'm like, turn that shit, get that shit out of here. Because uh, it's that personal to you. Yeah, I mean, I take, I take it pretty serious. Yeah, because like I say, putting your boots on the ground and all that kind of stuff. Because 
I've seen the videos of you being out there and you're working and you're pointing and, and all of these different things. Um, and I know you told me about, what was it? The pool on the mountain yes. where in the drawing it was angled, but then you said it had to be sexy because you hit, you hit something. Rock. It was on a mountain. We had a rock. We had a hammer rock. We had to build a staircase that kind of, mm -hmm. you know, it was like a sexy S going up there. And that, they keep talking about the staircase, not even the pool. They love the staircase. They take pictures, put your family down the stairs, you know, it's, it, and then we build a, custom wrought iron railing that kind of like followed it. It's kind of like a, like a sexy lady shape, right? Mm -hmm. And see, and that's the crazy part. People will tell you that they want all of these different things, but what means the most to them, there are moments and pockets in the designs that you do. Yes. And that's where, like I say, in working with you, where I get to see so much value. It's, and I know I fuss about putting people in your photos because like you just said, people are take they, they continuously take pictures of the of the staircase because yes. it leads up to the pool. And there's a moment there. There's a moment there that comes across that I don't care who you hire, that moment on those steps is something that they continuously capture. So like we did a job that they have like, I don't know, seven kids, maybe eight, maybe nine by this time. Stop but it. But like, yeah. But they took a family photo, all dressed up, and they're all on the stairs, coming down the stairs, from little to big. I mean, they'll have that forever. Yeah, right? forever. They'll, you know, they'll be hanging in their living room forever, and it's on that staircase. So, yeah, that to them, that was very important for the staircase. They're not all swimming in the pool taking a family photo, but they're all dressed up down the stairs, right? So when the kids are married and all, they'll look back on, the, on that picture on my staircase, and they'll show, you know, that element of the landscape. And you gave them that moment. Gave and that's moment. what what comes across to me and what's not talked about enough in what you do. And that's kind of like what I kind of fuss about. Well, I do fuss at them, y'all. Yeah, but those, those time, that yeah. story right there, stop it. But those that story right there and like, you know what? I have a client that they have a photo and they're sitting on the stairs. And when I was doing this, it was, I hit rock, but I turned it into a moment for the family. That's a valuable story that no other person can ever tell. It's like the the one you told me about um, the guy in the fishing hole. And like I said, I know you go out and you handpick a lot oh, of shit. Oh, God. The f yeah. That rock. That's another rock. It reminds him of his fishing hole. He talks about, we built a patio and walls and lighting. And then he's a fly fisherman, right? And he goes upstate New York and he fly fishes in this natural boulders all around with moss on it, right? I know a place to get the, moss, the those kind of rocks out in Pennsylvania. So I was able to get those rocks to his site. That's all he talks about is those freaking rocks with the moss on it. Not the patio and all the rocks. And that, that, and that is, like I said, and it's, in is... Yonkers, and it's in Yonkers, New York, which is right outside Manhattan. And there's no, there's no rocks like that. It's concrete everywhere, but no, no rocks with moss on it. Introducing branding boundaries and bullshit by the one and only grandma, Phyllis williams Strother. Hey, you there. Are you tired of all the boring personal branding stuff? Well, my mom, grandma, has got you covered with her awesome new book. In this game changer, grandma doesn't play by the rules. She's a rebel who says you don't have to fake it to make it. No more being a people pleaser because it's time to get real. Look, my mom's been there, done that, just like Pitbull, except she was a multi-million dollar restaurant owner. She's got all the stuff to let you know what's real and what's just okie doke. This book isn't for the corporate crazy. It's for the courageous, the genuine, and the unapologetic. It's about putting you first and not some fake customer pleasing it because this is not the circus. Branding boundaries and bullshit is like a fist pump to those who refuse to conform. It's your match to discovering your YO uniqueness and owning it. So just the BS and start branding on your own terms. Get grandma's book now and let your true self shine through. And that again is the story of your brand. It's like, I may do design, but you also, you create moments. And those moments are magic. They're magic to me because I get to hear how you brought something special to someone. How you constantly remind them of their favorite place. How you brought a family, like, you know what? This is so fucking amazing. This is where we're going to take our family photo. That shit, I could give a rat's ass, like you said about yeah. the. So I don't think about it. I don't. It just you know because I you guess, just do it. 
yeah, there's another one here. We just finished a big job. I don't know, maybe five or six years ago. And, um, um, he passed away. Right. And she's moving now. It's a big house. She's moving. She called me up like three weeks ago and they're moving and they want me to come and dig out that tree and bring it to the new house. Right. Shut up. Yeah, yeah, man. It was a sad thing. Yeah. So, so I said, yeah, we'll, we'll get it done. It's a lot bigger than when we planted it, but yeah, we, we can make it happen. So, um, and good see, story there. Who, and again, a story, who the fuck designs something and then goes back and gets a tree for a client? Uh, sucker Stevie. Sucker that is Stevie. not a sucker, sweetie. That no, is no, no, value. No. Well, I thought the other one last week that she bought a new puppy and the, the thing kept getting out. And I have dogs out of a soft spot. I said, if he gets out, he's going to get hit by a car. She goes, I don't know who to call. The fence company's not calling me back because it's just a small job. I said, it's a repeat client. I said, I'll come over there. I'll bring some chicken wire. Well, I'll put it underneath and I'll zip tie it together to keep the dog in. So it took about 20 minutes. Um, it, it, so it's fixed. Now I also got another job from her out in Montauk, which I'm going next week. It's all, that's all part of the whole, you know. Um, and that's all part of your story, sweetheart. Yeah. That right there. Like I say, people may look at pretty pictures all day long, but what will make them spend the money with you? It's like you went and saved a little woman. You saved the old woman's dog. That right there has more value than the Montauk home she, she has. Because you you took your time, a designer and an architect. You know what I had? No to, one else is. Uh, nobody else. Nobody else. No, no. I can. You know, it's on the Instagram. Those guys are not going over there putting uh, zip ties on. The no. To keep the dog in. And that, like, when we talk about capturing moments, and because you know, I do not advocate for sticking a phone in your face every time you're doing something. But if you you have been in the car and and did something, you know what? I have a client whose dog keeps getting out. I designed her backyard and all she cares about her is her dog coming getting out. And it's so I'm going over there to fix a, her. It, um, it was a golden retriever. It was like, I don't know, six yes. months old. And it just was looking for a friend. To play that was with. it. And I, I go in the backyard and he's jumping on me with muddy paws and like- So and you're the designer? Getting, you're the, the designer that saved the dog? You the saved dog, the puppy? The dog whisperer. <laughs> and, but it, that, that kind of stuff, you even told me we were supposed to have a call one morning and you said, can we do it later? Because my client is having a plumbing issue. You're yeah. not a fucking plumber, but you still go see about your clients. That's old school shit. Yeah. Most folks know, be like, that ain't school. my problem. You know that. Yeah, my they wife says that sometimes. Why are you like, going over there? Why, why is that your problem? I don't know. Because so it's not you, really just design. So we talk design all the time. You keep telling yeah. about design. It's a whole nother thing to the design. Right. And that that whole other thing are the things that, that we're talking about right now. I don't give my thing is like I want people to start coming to you for design. But all of these stories, these are the stories I want to hear. If you could talk about these and not turn it into construction, I'd be a happy ass camper. Yeah, it's, it's like, you know what? Here's a moment. People think that all I do is design and talk construction. But right now I got to go save a dog. Because my client is that that True. shit right there. Sure, I say that he kept getting out. I go, if he keeps getting out, he's gonna get hit by a car. Yes. I'm telling you, like he's gonna and get you hit. did not have to do that. But now, like I said, you had already done her property, beautiful backyard, all this stuff. Yeah. And now it's like, you know what? Now I gotta go do a house in Montauk and Montauk. And, 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 no, and no questions asked, by the way. No. no, like, hey, this is what we want. I'm not we trust you. We're coming out there. They're not driving four hours each way. I, I, they just get it done. And this is why I get angry about everybody trying to just, you know what, talking about grass and rocks and all this stuff. Why is that rock important? I want to know that more than I want to know about the rock. I want to know why is this his favorite fishing hole and why did I have to put it in his backyard? That story means more to me. I don't give a fuck if you never mentioned design. Huh. Okay. Telling that story would be that that's heartwarming shit. And the thing that I've learned in working with, especially the difference between men and women, men are not going to get all emotional about it. And so when I say tap into that emotion, so it doesn't have to be your emotion. Somebody's going to be, oh, he saved the dog. I want him to save my dog. Come do my yard. No, so my no, dog no, no, get not, out. I'm not in the dog city. No, no, I'm no. just saying, but the, but I, the, I, but the, the now this is, this is the design. This, how I designed this was this. But the thing I had to go back and fix, I had to fix it because the dog was getting out. 
What about is the guy that, that couldn't swim, Phil? What about that story? The guy couldn't swim. He couldn't swim. He's 50 years old. He couldn't swim. He built a pool and he showed me at the end of the summer how he could swim across the pool. That's he's out there every morning before he's a doctor. So and that very don't have indeed. shit with this do with design yeah, or construction. Yeah. And he swam across the pool and back. I was shocked. That couldn't part. swim. The beginning of the and the fact that he, swim. Steve, here's the thing. The fact that he calls you to come watch him swim. Yeah, man. That was a whole big to do. That was a whole big to do. I said, yeah, I came for design, that. but I got, I got to see somebody learn how to swim. Yeah. Yeah. You should that's how you that. constantly tell your story. And that's how you get people to stop seeing beyond the stop swiping on Pinterest because Pinterest is only going to do so much. But when you have a husband that when you've designed something where a husband learns how to swim and hang out with his kids, that's a whole nother yeah. level of shit. That's magic. Yeah. It was pretty cool. And when you designed your client's backyard, you didn't know she was going to get a dog. So you didn't even have that. That wasn't even part of the design element. No. But you know what? Let me go save a dog. You don't have to mention design. You don't have to mention construction. Sweetie, those are your magic stories. I save a dog. You saved the fucking the dog. dog. I don't care I what you did, say. I definitely, he was getting out like every Every day he's escaping. The neighbors would call, Hey, I got your dog over here. Like, it's, I said, This is not, it's not going to end good. I'm just telling you. I've had dogs. It just doesn't. It's not, and you it's not going to end good. Chicken wire. You took a, a, a two or three, a half million dollar job, and I'm just, I'm probably rounding up, but you took a big ass job that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, and you fixed a problem with chicken wire and zip ties. Yeah. We built That's a, a story. Her. We built a pool for her a few years ago. It was a beautiful pool with a grotto and a waterfall, and I mean, Outdoor kitchen, but we you know what means the most to her? You just saved, saved the dog. dog. Yeah, I, bit, I went to Home Depot, got a roll of chicken wire and a bag of zip ties. Twenty minutes, it was done. You know, because she, she's trying to find a fence company. She goes, "Do you know a fence company that can come over?" I'm calling people, and they're not responding. No one's gonna a fence company's not gonna run over there to fix your dog problem. You know, so I said, "Yeah, I, I know what to do. I'll be but right over there." Did. Yeah, because I have dogs and I did it at my house. They would escape under the fence. They dig, they they kind of mm -hmm. dig. So you want to like put the wire underneath. But do you see your stories emerging? Like I said, if you never mentioned design, Phyllis, I got. I don't even. You, I you're know bring, you're bringing it out of me because I just do it just to do it. I don't know. And that's just, the I thing. I just do it. I don't even think about. it. I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. I'm and this not, is not a pat on the back. So it's part of like I don't know. It's. I guess that's why I get referrals and I get repeat clients and they build second homes and all that's, yeah. I guess that's part of the um, sustainability last me the 40 years when like 2008, when the economy tanked, I still was able to work because of that. Yeah. Right? But see, the, like I said, because you do stuff like that, that is more valuable to your brand than anything else. The design okay. and expertise of 40 years. Oh, that's, that's just gravy. But the fact that you show up for your clients to to make moments, to to be able to have a family photo, it's like my 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 staircase will live on in this family. And you don't even have to tell it from a, my perspective. You know, I get the joy of knowing that this family enjoyed something that they can pass on. Everybody in the family will see this picture. When this young girl has kids, her kids will see her sitting on these steps. You're creating and, moments. And then when they said that's the best money we ever spent, I was like, okay. Like, you know, it was like 400 ish and change. That's a lot of money. Yeah. And they tell you that's the best money they ever spent. That's pretty cool. Like, yeah. I don't know if I just spent 400 grand and say that's the best money I spent. Like, you know what I'm saying? Damn like, house. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's pretty, uh, you know, my son, my, my, my other son became a lifeguard. I mean, it's just like good stuff all over, you know, and they, they just love it. They're out there. They keep that heater on till like November. And they, they're the first ones to open it in the spring, the last ones to close it. You see, like they I use said, it. Those, those, those are your brand stories. Those are I, how you get them out and how they come across is like, you know what? Let me tell you a story today. And then you tell the story of my clients call me because they wanted me to see the husband swim. Why the fuck do I care? Yeah. So that's why I think, you know, you and I working together, I think that's where you helped me a lot is pulling that out of me a little bit and showing the value of those stories versus just, you know, uh, rocks and stones and plants. And you see that all over the place. Yes. Yeah. But the being able to, to work that narrative in, it's like, this is a stop, stop work order. 
what did that do to the family? And it's like, you solved the problem because the other part is that, like I say, people don't know you, you, I, I will emphasize designer and architect for landscape. Dude is going down to the housing authority or whatever it is when people get stop work orders. That's not your job, but you do it. No, no, she, you know, um, I don't know. She basically was, yeah, I was on my plate then, right? Like she did a job without getting a permit. The town came in, stopped the job with a different contractor. I had to come in and clean up the mess and go to the town and get that all worked out, right? And see, you Only just glossed over that story like it wasn't important. It was a referral, right? I wouldn't do that for just anybody, right? Yeah. So it was, you know, my 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 sister in law has this house, and it so you know that's part of it, I guess. What in case of emergency, break glass, call Grigsy. Okay, shit, I get calls all the time. If you got a plumber, you got an electrician. I got water in my basement. I got, yeah, I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> But like I say, you shouldn't gloss over these stories. They're your stories to share. And it's not, it's not, it's, and I think that's where a lot of us get stuck. We think we're patting ourselves on the back, back or we're being braggadocious. But it's like, I just want to tell you about this family and a great experience I just had. I got to go see a grown ass man swim across the pool. And that made him so proud. And my small part in that was that I got to build a pool for it. But it is how you 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 bring these stories out and how you tell them, sweetie. That's your magic. I, I don't. I, I we're doing one out in Montauk, and the and the the husband's you know has something wrong with his legs and he can't move around that long, and they're mm-hmm. like, you know, they they he's feeling a little left out, you know, uh-huh. he's feeling a little left out, and they want to put him over by the tree, and he's like, you guys are gonna just put me on the tree? I like. I'm like, ah, oh, because I know the guy. And I'm like, ah, oh, he this is not gonna work. He likes to be the center of attention and talking. He's having a new grandbaby. I said, let's build him a little something off of the pool area with a shade with a canopy over it, with a with a couch swing on it. So he can kind of be feel part. We're gonna stick the guy in a corner. I like so I wrote on the drawing, Regis's chill hangout spot. Do not disturb. She just wrote back, excellent. Because he was like, you know, they're starting to like, you know, butt heads a little bit, you know. I was like, I mean, you guys going to stick me in the corner over here. I said, you can't put him over there. So it's too far away from the action. You got the kitchen, the fire pit here, and you're going to stick him on the other side of the, the pool area? What the hell is that? What the hell is that? I says, uh, ain't happening. Not on my watch. Oh, my God. It just happened this morning. We, we, just, we just finalized all that. Wow. See? Again. I don't know. It just came to me. I, I don't think of it as a story. It's something, I guess, from your from your take on it, you see it as a story and yeah. anything. I just see it as getting the shit done. <laughs> you know, I don't. I think you're a unicorn landscape designer, seriously. And because I, all the stuff that I've learned from you, just listening to some of your stories, because like y- y'all just don't know. Sometimes we get into arguments. Neil think he's my client husband because he'll come. <laughs> Neil's like, "What are you and Steve fussing about now?" Oh <laughs> well, yeah, we go at it. It's good me. to go at it a little bit, you know. <laughs> but but the and, and, the and you know where my frustrations are with that whole no, thing, I do. branding I do. and social and all these. Shit I do. This goes on and, and on, you know? the only reason I fuss with you is because I I see so much value, and especially in all these things that you just told me, the dog, the pool the family photo, the the husband being too far away from the action. Sweetie, all of that is magic. And people think, like I say, all they, I see people constantly showing the designs and showing the, the landscape in and of itself and telling me that this was a three and $400,000 job. But what was most important was all of those stories that you, we just mentioned. The dog, the pool, the man, one, your client, come watch me swim. How many, and you went. Yeah. You went. You thought, most people think, oh, my job is done. I built the pool. Leave me the fuck alone. Yeah. You went to watch a grown ass man swim across his pool because he was proud of it. And you got to be a part of that. So, so when you talk about branding and all that, so how do we verbalize the differentiation between, you know what I'm saying? Like we keep saying feels, why am I different? Why am I different? I get, why am I different? I don't know. I'm just getting shit done. Like, you know, and you have see, to be able and to verbalize, yeah. you have to be able to verbalize that and like, 
Oh, hi, I'm Steve. I'm the designer. Oh, by the way, I saved the dog. Like we have to be able to- That would be a great one. <laughs> that, believe it or not, that would be perfection. Because if someone calls, if you say, oh, by the way, what do you mean you saved the dog? Oh, oh, by the way. And then oh, what, and then what you do, lessons. and then what you do, you end up saying, well, I built this yard and I gave this, this, and this. But what meant the most to the client was when they called me after the job because the dog kept getting out. So you can tell the whole magnificent story of the yard and what it caused. And all, as, but what meant the most? I did the job the five years ago. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> And she's like, hey, by the way, we bought a house out in Montauk and I need you to, would you mind, would you go out that far? You know, um, yeah, for you, I would. I said, I said, typically I wouldn't come out here for just anyone. It's far, right? So um, this is after she told me about the dog because she just happened to call me to ask me, do you know any, do you, you know any fence companies that can fix the fence? So that's how that, that's the dog story. I don't so know I like I said, when somebody asks you, what do you do? I create moments, I save dogs, and I watch people swim. And, I, like, save, what? and, I, and I save marriages. And right? you save marriages. Because I save they're, dogs, they're I save when marriages. When fussing in the backyard and the husband wants one thing and the wife wants another and I'm in the yeah. middle, man. So when that, somebody asks you, how are you doing? I save dogs, I save marriages, I save time. <laughs> That's it. And people are gonna ask, what do you mean about you save dogs and marriages? And it's like, okay, well, let me tell you about my clients. And you get to tell them these heartwarming stories. You get to kind of bring it out of them and or bring it out of yourself and how you tell these stories. My client called me to, for this. And it, this was after I had already completed the job however many long ago. Because one of, one of the, the books that I read recently was um, Stories That Stick. And the way that I, I reduced it in my mind, there's an old saying that we used to say, dropping, um, I'm going to drop dime on somebody, which means you're going to tell on them. So the thing that she talked about is like, you give them a detail. You have a, um, I think they said an intimate character. I forgot what the I is, but you also have a moment and you have an emotion. So when you tell the story, it's like, give them a little detail. You know what? Creating this S was this. And then you have an, an I, I can't remember, ideal ideal character or something of that nature. But I had, I built a staircase or whatever the moment or whatever the detail is. I turned a, a L into an S. That's the detail. Then the ideal person was because this family decided that they wanted to put a pool on a mountain. And then the the, the moment was sometime in the summer. And the emotive part is his pride in being able to swim across a pool that for never, that I'm, I'm jacking it up a little bit, yeah. but it's like just remembering how to, how to drop a dime on somebody. How are you going to tell on them? I'm going to give a little detail. I'm going to find an ideal character for the story. I'm going to place it in a moment and that moment could be anything. And then I'm going to tie it to an emotion. It doesn't have to be your emotion. All of your, all the things that you just told me, were emotions by someone else. He was proud. She was happy. Th um, they were content. You stop marital discord. It doesn't have to be your emotion. When I talk about emotional hooks or tying some emotion to it, people think that it always has to be, I can give a fuck about your emotions. I want your clients and your audience to feel some emotion. And how, how you felt in all of this, you might have been standing on the side of the pool. Why the fuck am I standing here watching a grown ass man swim? That could have been your thought. <laughs> it was good. It was it was cool. Like See? you know. And so you could say for me that but, was just but, a cool you know what's what it, you know. I'm like, damn. What if he can't swim? I'm gonna have to jump my ass in that pool and drag his ass out. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Because he really gonna swim? Because six weeks ago you couldn't swim. Now you can wow. swim. I'm like, ah. Damn, See, and that's the moment in time. Six weeks ago, he couldn't swim. Yeah, six weeks ago. That was so. When swim. we talk about the, we talk about the detail, the which is the 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 pool on the mountain. We talked about the ideal character. It's the husband in the story. Oh, and the birds in the soffit. What the hell is birds in the soffit? What yeah, happened? A client from Brooklyn who comes up and they they it's their summer home and they don't know wildlife and they see deer and they think they're beautiful but they eat all the plants and then he's like you got to come over you got to come over I hear stuff in my attic I hear like something's going on he's freaking out 
and it was birds made a nest up in the attic, like on this under the porch, you know, they can kind of go up in there. Yeah. So he was freaked out. So I had to call the boys, go over there, take the birds out, take the nest out, close it up. You know. And what was your what was your original interaction? What what was the job that you did for them? Oh, we did it. We did this whole backyard, put the pool in, the whole thing. But now you're getting birds out of the. I'm getting birds out of Southfields, man. Like I. That's... <laughs> I, I think we have been uh, paid her here. No, I, I'm not going to be the designer that saves Bernie Saves. <laughs> uh, I'm telling you. And this is why you have so goes much. on, man. This is 40 years of magic you've been holding back. Oh, by the way, Griggs, I know you're in the neighborhood. I'm in Brooklyn. I have a delivery coming. Can I give you the code to the garage and let the and let the guy in there? He's got a furniture delivery. Sucker Steve, sure, no problem. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know that that's, I think when you look at it, that's why they call me. That's why. That is why. I don't know. It's like, I mean, you, you are that, 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 you're that go-to guy. And because you go beyond the design and architecture. My, my and mother-in-law calls me got a guy. Shut up. Yeah, I got a guy for everything. I got a guy. 40 years you just know you just know you just know i know you know people I that is 40 like years worth of shit that i'm oh, a you phone gotta go phone. google it don't you i mean I, I gotta, all people don't have to google shit we know why shit do th- why do you think the lady after five years called me up and says i know if some if anybody's gonna have a fence guy it's gonna be griggs <laughs> so she you know what i'm saying so, oh my gosh! Yeah, so that's you know it. What? I got a guy. That's I mean, we gonna work that in some kind yeah, of way. But yeah, we need to focus on the design and the design. But it's no and, and sweetheart. Like I said, I the only reason I want you to focus on design so people start calling you for consulting for the design part. But all of they're these not, stories they're not hire me to come take a bird out of the side. No, no, no. But the but it's tying the story. It's like you know what. This is why people think they're finished with the job. You hire a designer. He gives you some plans, and then you go on what along your way. Let me tell you about the client that called me 10 years after the fact. And you get to tell that story, but then you get to tie it back to the design and the construction. So is it like, the, so you, you know, um, I don't know, I have a hard time verbalizing it. Maybe we'll, we'll work on that some more. Just yeah, say like, you know, yeah. you know, after the project is done. Oh, after the project's done. By the way, if you have a bird in yourself, call me. I'll no, 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 no. We don't want you them calling <laughs> you for that shit. But it's like, you know what? Here are the magic moments that people don't tell you about in design. You can tell them the whole elaborate story about the design itself, the whatever you put in. And it's like, but the magic moment happened three years later when my client called about a bird in this. And this, and, and because we talk about your level of referral service, and this is why people constantly refer me because I don't stop at design. Sometimes I call myself Sucker Steve. My mother-in-law calls me, I got a guy because... I don't, I, because I care about my clients. That level of caring is what, why people, what I want them to care about me. Because if the design is done, I want to, I don't know if I'll ever call Steve because we do have to give you an offboarding process where people can funnel through something else. But the, but the thing about, they know you care and not enough people care. If that's not a distinction, I don't know what is, especially when, when we looked at other designers who, like I say, they draw your shit and then they give you a list of contractors to go vet. You know nothing about vetting contractors. You are getting screwed on prices and and people putting liens on your property because they don't finish your job or whatever kind of shit that could happen. But you know what? Steve's got a guy. And so that, stop it. And so that makes that makes a level of distinction that no one else can have. I got a list of people, which is totally different than I got a guy. Yeah, I got a guy. Like, just, I take, just whatever. I say, call so-and-so. They need a hand with something. Um, I, I get, I just, that's you just what it. I do. I, I don't, See that? It's just, I'm telling you. It doesn't you. even, I don't even, I don't even think about it. I know. And I that's say, what happens. Let me go save that dog because I might get a job later. You know? No, just, th- the thing it, is that the saving the dog came after the job. I'm yeah, not, it's, yeah. years later, like, yeah, I haven't talked to her in five years. Yeah, and then once she saw that, it's like, oh, but by the way, we're moving to Montauk, and now you got another what half yeah. million dollar job or something? No, it's not that big, but it's a good. It's it's you know, it's, it's nice. a nice chunk of change, huh? 
Yeah, nice chunk of change where it's not, she's not going to be like, you know, just go do your thing. You know, not going to be like, you know, micromanaging. She can't. Yeah. She's a very, very busy person and busy family. And, you know, they just know that. They know that when I'm out there, I'm going to get the they shit They don't have done. to look over your shoulder. I'm coming out here Memorial Day and I know it'll be It'll done. all be done. It'll be done. And all of that, like I said, all of it is connected. But in how you tell the stories and spin it, it's like it 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 speaks to the level of trust that people have in you. And instead of always saying, "Why my clients trust me, sweetie, they called you five years later to do this thing. That's showing trust. That's not telling trust when they when they um take photos on the staircase that you built. That's showing trust. That's not telling trust. So when some people, when they talk about branding, they want to come, well, my clients trust me because I offer this type of service at this budget and this price and this time frame. No. Let me show you how much my clients trust me. Here's a photo of their family. And when that smallest child shows this picture to their child, then that's the moment that gets to live on. So if that child decides one day that they want their own pool on a hill, guess who she's going to call? Mm -hmm. Because I'm just that fucking generational. That, that, that's the thing. That's the thing. So that's okay. Your so fucking magical unicorn. Just accept it. <laughs> I mean, I, it you know, it's kind of like, a, so how do you relay that into branding? How do you, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to Tell us, we'll have to work on that on our on our calls yeah. to kind of figure out how to get that out without, you know, actually telling that. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, we'll how do get you, it, sweetie. We'll how get do you, it. you know, convey that? It's yeah. Just, um, I don't know. It's just shit. That, it's just, I don't know. It's just what I do. Fucking dig holes and plant trees. And, and you do so much more. And that's what I was going to say. I think a lot of times when we do stuff so automatically, it's like driving home. I know how to get home. Don't ask me how to get home. I just know how to get there. Yeah. Or getting to your favorite place. I know how to get there, but I don't know how to tell you to get there. And it's because it's become so ingrained that this is just part of my day. Oh, somebody called me at six o'clock in the morning. Ain't got shit to do with what I'm working on, but they call me at six o'clock in the morning and I go do it. That's a story to, that can go with the brand, but we don't think about it that way. It's just, this is just what I do. Yeah, how do you tell that story? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm thinking in my head, oh, I'll pick up my phone and say, hey, guess, tell me a story about I saved the dog. Like, No, so it has to be. Uh, here, here's, the, here's the thing. So if we're going to tell the dog story, we talk, We started off by talking about the client. You know what? This is a beautiful backyard. It has this, this, and this. And it says, but one of the most important elements to me is this little piece right here. And now you bring in the story about the dog. And it's like, I did this five years ago and it's still sustainable and all of this, but this right here. And it's, and it's whether you show it in pictures, whether you do it as a voiceover, however you do it, you can talk about the property, but then you tie in the story piece and to go along with it is saying that, um, let me let me zoom in on this spot right here. Cause so, so say like, if we're looking at a big ass picture, you know what, when I designed this five years ago, this is still... This is not a trend. This is just classic design. And it has these different things. But let me zoom in right here and tell you a little story. My client called me five years after the fact. And this, and you tell the story. And it's like, but if we look at the bigger picture, all we see is a beautiful backyard. But what we have is actually in a moment where a dog was saved. And I get to be the hero. I'll so be the hero, it, be the hero saving the dog. In that particular moment, yes, you can you can claim hero status in that particular moment. See him. See, you even got the fucking dog picture. <laughs> oh my god! The fucking dog, man. He like, oh he my! Just, god. He just wants someone to play with. He he, he was sad when you I left. have by the a way, picture by the of way, the damn dog. He was sad. He was sad when I left because he was like, oh, I got someone to play with, you know. And See? I was leaving. That's the picture I was I was I was leaving, walking down the driveway. He looked bummed out that he's like, damn. That was See, funny. A beautiful dog. That that you can tie that story to the design, to the design process. It's like some of the things that you'll never see in the design. And you tell it that story. It's like when I'm designing this, you see this patch right here, and you see this, you see pergola, you see outdoor kitchens. But what you never see are moments like this when you get to save a dog. And then you just tell the story. 
So you, you tell already, the story about the dog, right? Yes. I, I and then you to... you you go back and say, I am I what however you want to close it out or what call it action. It's like you may not have a dog, but you have moments you want to save. That's when you call a designer like Grixie. Okay, so you'll have to work on developing that story and how do we able to tell that story to the world because you know me i'll trip over my own left foot right but you have yeah to, but i you know you, you can't have wave with, you have a way with words that make it sound good right so we'll have to kind of figure that out yeah we have like i say but we know we can't script you because it it trip i know i can't script myself so that's not a thing is it it has to it has to start coming naturally and i think it will um, because if you try to script it, then that's when you really start tripping yeah. up. It gets yeah. bad. It gets bad. And I'm speaking as a witness of myself. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I can, I'll trip over it. <laughs> All right, honey. Is there, it, yeah. Do you want to close this out and tell us anything about what you call him for a console? I don't know if I got any people in New York, but he's going global. So y'all be on the look. He, he is not trying to stay in New York, especially in the winter time, but still sure. just, you know, Phyllis, you've helped me a lot tremendously since we 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 first met, and then how we developed the brand. And I get frustrated with certain shit. And you're pretty calm. You work with Danielle a lot, um, and you take my emails at four o'clock in the morning, and then not just one email. Like I'll send an email, and I'll forget a thought, and I'll send you another one and another one. And now you fucked up. You gave me your cell phone, man. <laughs> <laughs> He had it for a oh, while. Shit. He finally got it. He I got the cell phone, man. That shit is locked in. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but you really like we help me how we change in the model, how you you explained that I'm not just like everybody else, that my work should be more, you should be getting paid more for my yes. for my 40 years of experience. Yes. And then we're, we're continuing on that path working with you. And that's just been great so far. I'm looking forward to continue to work with you to see how far we can get this thing, right? Yes. Um, and like I said, the, the the thing about Steve, please go follow him on his social media, on his Instagram. He's at Steve Griggs Designs. Go watch him. He's he's developing. Don't judge my sweetheart by what he has right now because he is developing. And his brand is so much more than what we see on Instagram right now. And some other things are going on. And But a lot of his business is based on referrals. So I trust you. He, you whose house did you just show me the other day? You did the house for the dude who started IBM or something? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's down in Short Hills, New Jersey. Yeah, the founder of IBM's house, Mr. Watson, the, the new clients obviously on, but yeah, that was the original house of Watson. Yeah, house see? Wow, so it's a history story. It's a, it's a historic house in Short Hills, New Jersey, and they bought the two clients. And they bought it. Yeah, we do we do cool pro I like doing cool projects. Yeah, so don't, don't think, don't, this does not come cheap, and he does not do free consultations. I'm just letting y'all know. Thank you okay. for that plug. Thank you for that plug. But I know I got shit to do. So five, bullshit happens. So suck it up. Four, your voice is important. So speak up. Three, you make the world a more beautiful place. So show up. Two, life is good. So buck up. And one, I love you and ain't a damn thing you can do about it. So shut the fuck up. Peace and hair grease, y'all. All right, brand babies. We appreciate you stopping by because we know you got shit to do. Just remember to subscribe on your way out and bring a friend next time. In the meantime and in between time, stay connected with your brand mother on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. The links are in the description. And your brand mother wants you to remember that personal branding is not just personal, it's also business.